All right, so it's about 8.30 a.m. I'm out at Lindemar and Pacifica. I'm gonna try to make something of the scene behind me. I'm gonna have to work quickly because the wind is picking up and the light is changing dramatically on those hills in the distance. Uh, I wanna keep the shape simple as usual and I wanna include more sky in this painting. All right, so I'm gonna place the water line at about a third up from the bottom of the canvas and then have you know the land roughly like this i mean that's basically the composition so at this point i've walked back about 10 feet just looking at the shapes and i think this will work so these first shapes were just you know kind of spontaneous quickly uh, sketched in and now I can become more specific with these shapes. I went with a 24 by 24 inch canvas today because uh, a lot of these little shapes and little irregularities in the landscape are kind of small. If I were to paint on a 20 by 20 or something in that range or smaller, then all of these shapes would be really tiny and kind of frustrating to paint. Um, so, I decided to go with a 24 by 24. Even though I feel like this is kind of an experimental painting, I have no idea you know, how this is gonna work. But I've seen paintings by uh, Maynard Dixon in particular, he used to do a lot of Southwest scenes, although he's a painter from California originally. But he, uh, he, he did a lot of these desert scenes where he included a lot of sky and I really like the feel of those paintings. It's just, uh, even though there's not a lot going on in the sky, it does create this nice feeling of space and also kind of captures the grandeur of the scene. So I'm gonna sketch out where the white water is going to be. I just want a few little waves coming through and they're kind of coming in at an angle like this so I just want to place these roughly and then when I block in the water I'll leave blank spaces for these waves I'm trying to paint these quickly and not overthink it these shapes could change this is just a starting point in the sky there's some light clouds that sort of go in a pattern like this maybe a little bit over here too but basically the sky is all one value so not a lot going on which is okay all right the shadows on these hills are changing really quickly so i want to establish them uh, before i move on all right blocking in some of these shadow shapes using burnt sienna and I'm looking for a pleasing pattern here I'm trying to stay true to the scene as much as possible but ultimately I want a good design so I'm not afraid to change things in fact these shadow patterns are changing constantly as the Sun moves so it's not as if there's you know that gives you a lot of freedom Shadows in the distance, I'm using ultramarine and I'm keeping this uh, mix really light. There's a lot of mineral spirits in it. And I don't know that I'll be using uh, uh, any liquid today. When I paint on canvas, I often don't use liquid. I just uh, thin the paint early on with a bit of mineral spirits. And then I switch over to just applying paint straight out of the tube. I'm not thinning the paint at all. And there's some shadow shapes here as well. Something like that. Seems like I've got a lot of shadows going in this direction. I don't, that's kind of a problem. I think I want to switch it up a little bit. Maybe over here have some of these shadows more vertical. Like this. And this one actually over here is almost straight up and down. All right, so I like these shadow shapes. So now I'm gonna darken them up with a mixture of ultramarine and alizarin crimson, and I'm leaning this mix towards blue. And these shadow patterns on this hill here will be the darkest darks in the painting, but I do wanna keep them transparent. So, like I said, keeping the mix kind of thin here. And I do plan to leave some of the sketch showing through some of these bits of burnt sienna. It's nice to get some of that orange into the painting 
it's mostly going to be blues and greens so which is the case with most landscapes or seascapes so having those bits of orange coming through can be kind of nice and I am squinting at the scene, looking for the simple shapes. Squinting blurs your vision a bit and it eliminates the detail so you can just focus on the big shapes, which is what's most important. I say it in every video, but if you get the big shapes right, the painting should work out. All right, for the shadows in the distance, I'm using a mixture of ultramarine blue and titanium white. And I wanna make sure that these shadows in the distance are light enough that they recede into the distance. So I'm comparing these two values here. I'd like to get a lot of saturated color into these shadows, so I'm going with a mid-tone value to start with. Mid-tone values allow you to get a lot more visible color. I've got a mid-tone warm green here for the light portion of these hills. And I might need to lighten this up as well. But I do want to make sure that this mountain shape here is sort of a unified shape that's only gently broken up by the lighting pattern. So I'm going with a mid-tone green here. I've got my canvas in the sun, which is not ideal. It's good for filming actually, but it's not ideal for painting. So once I get the whole thing blocked in, I'll turn it so that I can judge the colors and values better. For now, I'm mostly just working on approximating color. So this is fine. And like I said, it's actually uh, shows you guys what I'm doing a little better than when the canvas is in the shade. So now that shape is more unified. I do want some uh, differentiation between the shadows and the light, but I don't want it to be too dramatic because in real life, it's not that dramatic. Uh, the light portion of the mountains is a lot darker than the sky. So I think that's a good start right there. And already you can see these distant mountains seem to be receding. All right, so for the light portions on these distant hills, going with a mixture of burnt sienna, some cadmium yellow, medium, and titanium white. And again, just approximating color and value here. All right, so the land is blocked in and I'm primarily looking for two things. Number one, that I like the shapes and number two, that the value relationship between the land in the foreground and the land in the distance uh, is such that it creates a sense of depth. The water and the sky are not changing that much, so I didn't really need to focus on them, uh, but now I will put in the water. For the water, I'm using a mixture of titanium white, ultramarine blue, phthalo blue, and a touch of burnt sienna. I have thinned this mix a bit with medium uh, using liquid today, and the reason is I wanna be able to apply the paint spontaneously, so I'm keeping it thin, I'm gonna leave little areas to suggest white water. And for now, I'm just gonna block in the water using one color, one value, this sort of blue-green color. It's like a mid-tone blue-green. And once it's all blocked in, then I will look for delicate shifts in color and value within the water. In particular, adding things like sky reflection on, on the surface. I'm using a number eight natural bristle flat at this point because this area here, I wanna cover it fairly quickly. I will probably be switching to a smaller brush uh, in this area for sure, but possibly in the water as well. These canvases are rounded over on the edges, which I don't like because I use floater frames. So that means I always have to make sure to paint the edges. I don't wanna do touch-ups when I get home. 
my goal for the last few years anyway has been to finish a painting on site with no touch-ups at all I still do minor touch-ups when necessary but uh, most of the time the paintings that you see in these videos have been com uh, have been completed on site All right, for the sky, I'm starting with a mixture of titanium white and ultramarine blue, and I've got a bit of phthalo blue in the mix as well, and paying attention to value here. I do want to get some color into the sky, but I also want to make sure that the relationship between the sky and the distant mountains is such that the mountains are darker than the sky. I'm also comparing the value of the sky to uh, the value of the white water, the white water is going to be the lightest value in the painting. So I want to make sure that the sky is darker than the white water. One thing I'm noticing right away is the amount of white paint that I'm going to go through. I squeezed out a generous portion of white paint, but I'm all ready to squeeze out some more. You know, when you've got a big area like this to cover, uh, you use up the paint pretty quickly. All right, so for the white water, I'm using titanium white straight out of the tube. As far as the thickness goes, I haven't thinned it at all. I've added a touch of ultramarine, but very, very little. I wanna keep this mix as bright as possible. And even though I'm gonna be working around these shapes here, uh, I want to have the paint already be really thick. I may add more paint later, but Thick paint equals more color, higher value, and I want these uh, values to be as high as possible, as bright as possible. It's kind of a wave breaking like this over here. A little bit of white water here too. I remember when I first started painting, somebody said, never use white straight out of the tube. Uh, I do it all the time. It always picks up a little bit of the surrounding color anyway. All right, so there is the block in. Uh, at this point, I get back about 10 feet and just look to see if there's anything I want to change. And I think, I think this will work. I may make some minor changes, uh, but the next step is to uh, come in with thicker paint and adjust the colors and values. Although I don't think I'm gonna do much more to this. There are some lighter areas of fog or clouds or both, but just, trying to create a little bit of a, a variation in value and uh, temperature in the sky but I don't want to overdo it I want to keep I actually want to keep some of the scrubbed in transparent areas if possible all right a mix of titanium white and ultramarine blue just putting some sky reflections on the water Okay, so here is what I finished up with. This painting took about two hours to finish. Um, I have not done any touch-ups at home. This was finished in the field. Again, the goal with this painting was to experiment with a big sky. I'll try to do a close-up of some of the brushwork in the sky. I tried to keep the value range very narrow and then alternate the strokes between uh, vertical and horizontal. All right, well, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you'd like to see some extra videos and help support the channel, there's a Patreon link down below. It's the Patreon support that helps keep me making these videos, and it's much appreciated. So check it out. Other than that, stay creative. See you guys in the next video.